nothing's different. <laughs> So, uh, week one has come to pass. Also, week one of my very first time playing fantasy football, and I'll have you guys know I scored a massive 83 points. Everybody clap it up for me. Yes, I did have both Jalen Reed, Jalen, Jaden? Jalen Daniels. Jaden Reed. I had Jaden Reed on my bench, guys. 31 points. Clap it up. Clap it up. I'm an excellent manager. Uh, it's going to be great. I'll keep you guys updated throughout the year on how bad I do, but uh, yeah, it is my first time playing fantasy football and I did not do very well. Marvin Harrison with a massive 0.9 points. Boomer bust team, guys. Boomer bust and we're looking boom. We're looking boom this week. We're gonna go real big time. Mark Andrews, 2.9 points. Gonna do it again, maybe. Who knows? 2.9 from Mark Andrews and 0.9 from Marvin Harrison. That's a, that's a whopping 3.8. 3.8 from my two, uh, I believe that's like my my third round and my fifth round pick. But it's also the end of week one of the NFL season, and we have a couple things to highlight. I'm going to mainly be talking about my commanders, but I'm going to cover some of the other, I guess, major storylines throughout the NFL. So to get started, let's just keep all my engagement while I have it. Uh, for the Commanders fans that came here to talk about the Commanders, it's actually the first time in at least eight years now that uh, after week one, we're not most concerned about our quarterback. What I'm really concerned about is how horrible our dog shit defense looks like. They couldn't stop a nosebleed. They look like, uh, our defense is looking like modern day XXL freshman ciphers. She will give me the scope. That's really just not a good thing. Uh, we've got uh, Emmanuel Forbes still out there on the field. He finally got benched. Uh, I don't believe he will have much longer on the team if I had to take a guess. There's no way we continue to let him give up 100-yard games uh, just week after week. And if we do, I mean, shout out to our defensive-minded coaches that are really ranking us uh, very highly here at 32nd after week one. So really overall, just a, just a fantastic performance from our defense. I will say Bobby Wagner does look like he's, he's not as slow as I expected him to be. He does look like a tackling machine still, which is really good. If you guys watch the actual NFL's YouTube channel and you watch the game recaps, you wouldn't have seen this because for whatever reason they cut it out. But Bobby Wagner had back-to-back -back, uh, tackle for losses where he just got right through the line and got him in the backfield, which was pretty nice. And we were very close to getting a ton of sacks. I think we had Baker Mayfield at least like eight or nine times, but he kept getting out of it. And I will say, if you look at the advanced stats on Baker Mayfield, he actually, Baker Mayfield, was one of the best quarterbacks when forced out of the pocket under pressure last year. Not trying to defend our loss here, but if you go back to last year and you take a look at the Tampa Bay Bucks, not only were they a playoff team, and I know nine and eight scraping by, but they beat the Eagles in the first round of the playoffs and they had the Lions on the ropes in the second round. That playoff game finished 31-23 in the Lions' favor. It was a one touchdown game. I mean, two point conversion, they're right back in it. Baker Mayfield threw a sad interception at the very end there. Here comes that pressure. Without that, it could have been a very different story. They knocked those, those Eagles off pretty easily and they were in that game for the Lions too. So, so all things considered, that team is looking like they're on the uptrend. I think they're gonna be pretty good this year. We have some problems that we definitely need to look at. Our cornerbacks are dog shit. Our D-line is a skeleton of itself. We used to have five first round draft picks and now we can barely get any pressure. We have no pressure coming from the ends. I will say we've got a lot to clean up. I don't think Jaden expected to rush 16 times, but you could tell that there were some nerves, especially with that first pass being backwards to Brian Robinson, an immediate loss of 13 yards was bad news. After he settles down a little bit, you can definitely tell that rushing ability is there. He's an electric quarterback. And like I said, this is the first time in eight years that after week one, our least concerning position is the quarterback. I think we're gonna be fine there. As long as he gets down, I know a lot of people are worried about how he gets down and how it doesn't look very pretty. But if you really think about it, when you go to slide, you're laying back and you're letting the defender still kind of load up and hit you if they want to. You see a lot of these late hits on sliding quarterbacks in the NFL. But if you go to dive forward the way he does, you almost make the person worry about their knees to where they back up and let you fall. So if you go through and watch some of the times that he was getting down, you'll notice that none of these people were launching on him, not because they didn't want to get a free shot at him, but because the way he's falling makes it a little bit harder to, I guess, launch on him in a way. Second down and eight. Daniels going to run, and he can do this just fine. Daniels. Blitz gets away. Daniels with room to run. Daniels across the way. Daniels going to run. Daniels leaning forward. Helmet off. Nobody open. Daniels will run. First down and more, and Daniels down 
at midfield. Obviously, it's not a good idea to launch on a quarterback while they're sliding back either, but you can still kind of go at them with some momentum without worrying about your own body getting in the way of harm versus if he's kind of diving at your knees there, your initial human reaction is to kind of jump back a little bit and put your hands down to get him away from you. So all things being considered, even though it's not a very pretty way of getting down, I will say, I think personally that it's going to be the least harmful way of getting down in terms of when you slide like that, you have the chance of your cleat getting stuck and your knee getting all jacked up. And then also you see a lot of these late hits that are going down on quarterbacks that are sliding. So with the way he's falling, as long as he gets down consistently and he doesn't fucking fall apart, um, I think we'll be okay. I will say there was a couple times where he did not get to his second or third read, or if he did, it was not in the right read order that I wish it would have been because there were some open players downfield where he was taking check downs or hitch routes uh, or trying to scramble and he missed them. And Terry McLaurin obviously only being targeted twice is not a good look, but everybody calmed down about the Terry 1000 yard season thing. He's had a game before where he had zero yards and he still had a thousand yards in the season. So I mean, obviously it could have been better, but it's not gonna impact his long run chances at getting that 1,000 yard season for the fifth year in a row now, uh, practically sixth. I mean, he had 900 yards in this rookie season, so. With that being said, we can move along from my commanders onto, I guess we'll just highlight some of my, the games that I watched over the weekend. I will say one other thing that I mentioned when we were talking about our super team video, when we were building our super team and how Austin Eckler isn't too young, 28 years old is not too young for a running back. And that burst that everybody swears that he lost Looks pretty fine to me. Daniels checks over the middle. It's Austin Eckler with his first catch. He breaks tackles. Austin Eckler inside the 35 and down at the 30. Looking at that play specifically, I had to bring that play up because that play got me super fired up during game time. When I was watching, I, I immediately started mocking all the people that said that he was too old and that he didn't have it anymore. Because after watching that, he's very fierce. He's bouncing off people and he's diving for those extra yards. I really think Austin Eckler has some left in the tank. I think we're gonna get a lot out of him this year. But let's move on to some of the other games that I watched during the week and some of the storylines that I've been hearing about and what we're looking forward to in week two. So everything started with Thursday Night Football, Chiefs, Ravens, that AFC Championship rematch. And uh, I live in the Baltimore area. And let's just say everybody claims that the refs won that one, not the Chiefs. I will say the triple or it was either back-to-back -back or triple calls of the uh, elite, what was it? The, the, their left tackle was lining up off sides essentially or not all the way up with the offensive line. And the fact that it happened twice in a row, in my opinion, is a huge coaching error. If you get called for something like that, you don't just say, hey, why'd you call that? And then line up again. Obviously they're gonna call it a second time. Harbaugh there, you gotta do something to tell your guy, hey, I know that that's how you've been lining up your whole freaking time and that this is different and new, but you gotta get up on the line there because the fact that they had it back to back was kind of funny. I think overall the refing in that game, they were a little bit itchy to call some stuff. You gotta realize that these reps are probably uh, nervous as hell too, adrenaline filled. It's their first game in over seven months or whatever it is and uh you know so i guess give them a little bit of slack too but at the same time i hate seeing games decided by the refs i don't think that game was decided by the refs that toe out by likely was definitely out if he had white cleats might have been a different story people are saying your cleat goes up at the end and technically speaking his toe you know his foot's down here and the line's here and that's his toe and it's going up and it's not actually touching and yada 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 they lost his toe was out unfortunately but hey you guys look like a pretty good team the chiefs are obviously the super bowl defending champions and uh they're probably going to be going back so they're the team to beat if you guys can get close to beating them you guys have a good chance of going the whole way and at least giving them a run for their money in the in the uh AFC Championship again. So look forward to that. Derrick Henry looked okay. Not as elite and game breaking as I imagined having both him and Lamar Jackson in the backfield. But I think there's more to come with that. There's going to be some big rushes from both Lamar and Derrick Henry. And I think you can credit each other for how that goes because they're going to be worried about Derrick Henry getting up that ball up the middle and just bursting it through for, you know, a 50 yard long bomb. And then at the same time, right when you start to load up for that, you got Lamar coming out on the edge. So you got to give them credit. They, they've got a good team built. And uh, I think they're, they've got got a good scheme, good team, good coaching. Uh, I, I don't think that they've got anything to really worry about. It's a tough loss. It's the Chiefs. You could say it was the refs. It was a great game. It's a good way to start off the NFL season. And I didn't get a count on how many times I saw Taylor Swift, but it seemed to be less than last year. Moving on, I watched a couple of games on Sunday before the 430 games, which is when the Commanders played. Uh, I got to see uh, the, the New Orleans Saints whoop some ass. I had Chris Olave on my team who did not put up any points at all. Again, I had a really bad week, 83 whopping points. Just bad news, bad news bears for me. But 
Speaking of bad news bears, let's talk about the uh, Caleb Williams led <laughs> bears, guys. So Caleb Williams, I think it, I don't remember the exact uh, verbatim of the stat, but essentially the stat goes he's the first rookie quarterback to to win his opening game with less than 100 yards, I believe. He had less than 100 passing yards, somewhere around 50% completion. Um, he didn't turn the ball over and he didn't look that good from what I saw. Uh, he was running around a lot. He had a one play where he, he ran around for forever and then took a sack just a, a massive Williams under pressure that is a big man chasing him <laughs> and Williams unable to get away from Sebastian Joseph Day I think he's going to quickly learn that the game speed is a lot faster and he doesn't have all the time in the world so once they get that ball out quicker he'll probably still be an okay quarterback I don't think he's the best quarterback in the draft class I don't know if Jaden Daniels is yet uh Bo Nix definitely isn't <laughs> those two picks I mean he's gritty he definitely you know that spin move to get into the touchdown at the end was really good but Bo Nix definitely not the best uh Drake May didn't even get to start. The fact that he's not starting over Jacoby Brissett is something very interesting to me. Jacoby Brissett over there with Antonio Gibson, two of our guys from last year that are getting another shot to start in the NFL, which is good for them, but I don't think either of them had a, a very good time on their way to a loss in week one. But yeah, the Saints whooped ass. The Giants still look like they suck a lot. It's impressive. Daniel Jones, a stat that's been going around a lot is, uh, I'll put it up on screen, He's got more touchdown passes to the other team than to his teammates since he uh, signed his massive contract extension, which makes no sense to me. They should have kept Saquon Barkley and just done anything else other than Daniel Jones. I mean, I know he's a sneaky af athlete. Uh, he beats us every time he plays us for the most part. I think we've only beat him one time. I think next week we have a good chance. Yeah, overall, they definitely should have kept Saquon. Brian Burns didn't do anything uh, on their defense. Their defense doesn't look as reloaded as they were claiming it to be. I don't think that they're going to be very scary. I think we have a good chance at finally getting that weird hitch or whatever. We're, we're finally going to get over our Giants hump. Jaden Daniels is going to be the Giants killer. I think his rushing abilities were really, really solid in that first game. I want to see a lot more out of his passing. Though. Missing Terry on that deep ball was really painful too. I forgot about that. But I think as he gets more comfortable, Jane's going to hit those long passes. That was his bread and butter at LSU. So I really don't have any worries about his long ball capabilities. I think he was just a little nervous. First NFL start, you know, honestly, to not turn the ball over and to put up around 200, what was it? 300 yards, nah, 260 yards of, of total offense. So it was okay. It wasn't as good as RD3's debut, but pretty solid, like I said. Aaron Rodgers finally came back against the San Francisco 49ers, and he does not look uh, bad per se, but I don't think that Jets team is as good as everyone thought it was going to be with Aaron Rodgers on it. Reese Hall still looks okay. He's on my team for fantasy. Aaron Rodgers overall just kind of looks like an aging, uh, talented He's still smart. You can see him make adjustments at the line. He knows the game of football better than most people on the field do, but he is 40 plus years old now. I think he's like 42, 43. And, and at this point with the torn Achilles coming off it, I just don't think he has that quickness and that uh, that real live speed that, that we're talking about with like Caleb Williams taking too much time. I just don't think Aaron Rodgers, at least this might be his last year. I don't really think he's got too much more in his tank in terms of being able to play at the real game speed. He's got the arm still, his arm looks amazing. And he still has, I think the respect of that whole team. You know, you can still see that they're playing for each other. And yes, it was a bad loss, but the 49 Niners went all the way to the championship, guys. I mean, these are these are contender teams, and the Jets weren't necessarily a contender team last year. Uh, and even with Aaron Rodgers, I don't know if they would have been. Uh, but they were very close. They have a great defense. I think that they've got excitement in the air over there in Rutherford, New Jersey. Uh, and they they should for some for good reason. I think Aaron Rodgers is still at least 80% of what he used to be, which is damn near top 10 still, if not top 10 bona fides. Exciting to see him back in the NFL. Not a good way to come back. Not like this story tale, uh, you know, massive win uh, against the 49ers. But he did come back nonetheless. He stayed healthy throughout the whole game. He played an okay game. He had a couple picks. The one of them was a deflection that really wasn't up to him. I think that that's just one of those plays that that uh is is a great play by the defense more so than an error by Aaron but overall he played okay and like I said I think he's at least like 80% of in my mind he looks as good uh 80% as good as what he used to be if not more the Eagles and Packers that's a big one I almost forgot about this one Jordan Love going down with not an ACL tear, which everyone thought it was at first. I believe it's an MCL sprain. He should be back later on in the season, but not till much later on, probably like has to week eight, but he looked pretty good. Uh, the Eagles, in my opinion, don't look very good. They still won, obviously, and they have absolute bona fide superstars in 
Saquon, we already knew Saquon was a superstar, but AJ Brown's a fucking alien. And then Devontae Smith is just as good. Obviously two different types of players, but he really is a, a productive member of their offense. And Jalen Hurts, he has these weird idiot throws every now and then. They're kind of like the Sam Howell throws that we saw last year where he would be playing really well. And then he just has this really, what the hell were you doing? Head scratching throw. And uh, he had a couple of those, one of them turning into a pick, but overall, Still got the win for his team. The the lack of Jason Kelsey at center is a big deal. I think people definitely knew that that was coming, that him moving on from the team and having to start over with a new center and not having that perennial Pro Bowl leader up there was gonna make an impact, but I don't think people realize that they might not be able to get these tush pushes as, as good as they used to with that fumble that we saw. And uh, just overall, I don't think that that center, the, the center quarterback connection has really formed all the way yet. And I think that was a huge reason as to why the Eagles were so successful with Jason Kelsey before, because obviously he was undeniably the best center in the league and also one of the best leaders of an NFL team in the league. You don't really see that from a lineman all that much, but a center in the league specifically. I feel like there's really, I mean, Creed Humphrey is really good. And to get that high of praise and to be considered essentially a team captain, a leader uh, of the team, he was a team captain, but a, a team leader uh, at center is it kind of makes sense when you really look at it zoomed out like this is the first guy to touch the ball and the guy who kind of gets everything started but typically it's not something you see to have so much praise given to somebody uh at his position so i think it's going to be huge that they don't have him anymore 26 to 20 i believe is the final score of that game uh it was a really hard fought battle like i said i had fucking Jaden reed on my bench who put up 31 points as a slot receiver who would have ever guessed? Yeah, he's starting this week. You best believe I started him, bro. Packers fans, you guys know what the fuck is up, dude. Jaden Reed dropping another one. Back to back. 31. 62. Okay, average. 31 points. Week two. I want to see that. All right? Get at me. Please. Please fucking help me, dude. I have no points, bro. I'm projected like 90. I'm projected 90 after scoring 83. And I was projected 72 fucking points at one point because of Marvin Harrison dropping point nine, Chris Olave doing jack all. Fucking 2.9 from Mark Andrews. I mean, shit, my Jets defense got me two points. God, if it wasn't for Jane Daniels, Jane Daniels scored 28 points on fantasy for everybody in this past week. And I think if you guys don't have him and he's on the waiver wire, or if you guys have the ability to trade for him, please do, because it's pretty obvious 16 rush attempts, 17 pass attempts. Even if we scale it back, he's gonna be rushing the ball 10 times. So yeah, I mean, you're guaranteed like one rushing touchdown and at least like fucking 50 rushing yards and, and maybe 150 plus with a touchdown in the air. So fantasy wise, Jaden Daniels might be one of the best. But yeah, all things considered, a week one to remember. Uh, very sad that we lost. Very sad. <laughs> very, very upset. Very, very sad. That was dumb. Week one in the books, though. A very memorable week one. Upsetting that we didn't win, obviously. But last year, we went 2-0 and and then finished 4-13. Jesus Christ. You know, it's a long season. It's, it's all about the marathon approach to it. You know, it's a long run. It's not a sprint. The Eagles last year, they got off to a sprint, and then they lost in the first round. So the most meaningful football is really going to be happening through October, November, and December. You can start Redskins 2012 style, uh, go three and six and finish 10 and six. So, you know, it really isn't as much about those first four games as it is about the last, whatever the hell, 13. Obviously we need to get things under control very quickly. We signed, we could have some tackle that's like six foot eight, 300 plus pounds. Look for him to be starting at some point this year. And then also we let go of Kate York and got a new kicker for the 19th time. If it wasn't for Brandon McManus's in sexual charges, bro. Fuck! That's okay, though, dude. We're good. Do we really need a kicker? A kicker issue in Washington that dates back to about 2021. Can he be the guy? York's field goal is no good. Do we? From 47. This from 56. And the kick by York sails wide right. I guess, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Tune in. Tune in. I'm going to try to do these weekly at least and cover mostly us. But if there's some other big stuff that happens, Jordan Love's hurt. Saquon's still good. Brian Burns sucks on the on the uh, Giants. Fucking C-Mac was hurt. Yo, funny enough, hilarious that the NFL decided to do that. Shout out to the 49ers for not telling anybody about the inactive Christian McCaffrey until literally like two hours before game time on Monday to where they couldn't sub him out on their uh, fantasy rosters. But I will say they're back up. Uh, if you guys ended up, you know, dropping somebody on your bench picking up the 49ers backup he did really well so all things considered but yeah no that's it for uh fucking big men in tights chasing each other sweatily week one i also got new i got new lenses they're really nice do you like it you see how blurry this is 
It's because of the light. Look, it zooms too, right? Dude, look how fucking crispy I am. Crispy cream, funky fresh. I'll leave a picture of my fantasy team here, guys. I know it's a boomer bust team, but leave your comments down below. Let me know if you guys have any of the same players on your team or if there's someone I should trade uh, or look for on the waiver wire. It's all new to me, so please let me know how I can win. There's punishments in the league. I'm probably gonna be recording them as well, so look forward to those, but uh, yeah.